Let's do this. Best best NPR voice that we have here. Let's see how this works. Greetings, units. Greetings. And welcome back to another fun-filled episode. Very 29 here, veteran of the woods. And today, well, boy, oh boy, I tell you what, people, oh, we've got a great show out here. I don't know why I'm doing a NPR voice. Uh, Bear is here just fine with his Wi-Fi. Thank you very much. Uh, and great to see Amy. Uh, great to see Jiminy out there. Uh, we can see and hear everybody just fine. Yes, indeed. Uh, great to have everyone here. I tell you what, people, it has been a crazy, crazy week here. I uh, still trying to get over the move. Uh, into the cave here. You know, we've got the, uh, bo- I still got the, got the dang box open from, um, what was that? Inglorious Rex out there. I still gotta do that. Still gotta do the freaking, uh, what is it? The, the, uh, Wraith of God? I'm gonna do a review of that and, and, you know, uh, eventually get around to doing a, 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 an approximation of a live show. An approximation. Uh, hopefully we can get there. And hopefully it will be professional. Uh, not really, though. Not today, though. Not today at all. Oh, good to have everyone here. I hear bear. That's good. That's good. Hmm. Hmm, indeed. Well, let's just jump right on into it, people, because we actually got some campaign, some great campaign updates. Uh, kind of some uh, unfortunate news here from uh, Indiegogo. It sounds like a little bit more. We we're talking a little bit about it uh, the last time. Uh, talking about um, a private American. Oh shoot, I don't have that. Uh, let me hold on one second here, people. Let me grab that. Put that in the in the chat here. Bear with bear. Let's see. Copy link. And you do the thing. And where am I? Oh, there we go. Uh, there we are. There is the Private American link. Uh, we've got a number of um, other uh, books out there as well. It looked like the Omega... Stri- Omega... What was it called? Omega Storm? I think it's called Omega Storm out there with um, uh, John Balin. I forget who's doing the artwork on that, but... Um, uh, that one, it seems like it's being Chateau Band. There's like one or two other ones there as well. Uh, Bear's going to have to check out the um, Omega Storm, see if that is actually... Um, uh, Chateau Band or not, but uh, very interesting. Kind of some strange stuff going on out there. Yes, indeed. Bear, bear with bear out there. Uh, we will do a professional show one of these days. Uh, but it's the weekend, folks. It's the weekend. We can't, we can't be doing anything professional on the weekend. Not at all. Not at all. All right. I, I, I hope everybody out there has checked out uh, the new... The new title, let's see, well, I've got the picture around here somewhere, where is, where is some of the new stuff from, like, Gary Shipman out there? Oh, of course, it's not even showing it, crying out loud, one of these days. Uh, the great stuff out there from, uh, a Gary Shipman, I'm doing some great stuff out there with Titan 3, uh, Titan 3 out there, but actually, he's doing something very interesting, going back, of course, you can see that it's all... I don't know. I, I don't know um, uh, how people uh, feel. I actually like the Titan in black and white. I think it actually works. But uh, you know what? Uh, he was showing that on his stream um, last night, I believe. The new... Oh, let me get to it here. That would help to be able to tell people what I'm talking about. Uh, the new book actually looks pretty good uh, in color. Um, they, they did a really great job. Anyways, anyways, the books, the books are coming in. Uh, Bear was saying last night, uh, you know, uh, he, he was doing a box open, and it's not that easy to do a box open out there, people, especially especially with claws like these. Uh, you know, they just they just don't work like they used to out there. <clears throat> uh, anyways, uh, from the G ship out here, the books are coming in. A uh, Gary L. Shipman creator, uh, November third, twenty twenty two. Uh, they just got in the Titan Mouse of Might, uh, full color. And now they can start fulfillment. So there we go. And he says, thank you for all of your continued support. Your friend or fiend uh, in comics. That would be Gary Shipman out there. Yes, indeed. So I do. Uh, hopefully people were able to check that out. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, okay. So so the, the one on the left there is um, uh, the first edition. And then they have the second edition there. So... Um, I don't know, I kind of like the cover for the first one there. It actually, 
I, if you're going to be talking about a Titan in color, that, that really pops more with the, the, the color theme there than the, the second one there. But uh, all, all good stuff. I think they did a really good job. Uh, just the very brief look that Bear had there with um, uh, Gary last night that uh, looked pretty good. It looked really, really good out there. There we go. There we go indeed. Uh, it looks like Elon's going to have to buy Indiegogo. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness gravy. And then you'll have to pay $8 just to... Uh, just to be able to list that up there, so, uh, uh, we'll see. We will see what goes- Bear's never got on Twitter, so, uh, I have no idea what's going on with any of that stuff. It looks like it's a lot of, um, looks like it's a lot of butthurt out there by a number of people, but, uh, that's alright. As long as the right people are being butthurt, uh, that's fine by Bear. Fine indeed. Yes, indeed. Alright, uh, also, also we've actually got from, uh, the great, uh, the great Aaron Lepresti out there. He was trying to put... Uh, this, um, let's scroll down there. Uh, great artwork there. Some great, I, do, I thought I already had that. Let me see. Hold on, people. Did I already have that? Of course, it's blocked. Thank you, OBS. Uh, no, that's not the right one. Uh, anyways, uh, some great stuff out there from uh, Aaron Lopresti out there. He's got some new artwork up for sale. Uh, he says, uh, hey, everyone. Hey, Aaron, how are you? Uh, the original art uh, to the back, the back cover. There you go. Wow, that would be a, that would be a get for one of the great fans out there. Uh, is now up for sale on the campaign page. Uh, he's sorry that it's up later than he wanted or anticipated, uh, but it's up and available now and probably already gone. I'm need to check that out, but um, like he said, oh boy, oh boy, what a week, what a weekend. I tell you, it's been a craziness nonstop out there. Uh, thank you for all your continued support of this exciting campaign. There's the there's the wraith out there, um, doing doing wraith things. Watch out! Watch out! There's a rattler there. A rattler. There you go. Um, it, it would be interesting to see this uh, colored as well. I, I think this would really pop. Uh, with it. I, I'm not sure if um, uh, Gabe is doing the colors for uh, this campaign or not. Uh, beer. I just briefly looked at the campaign, so I, I can't recall if... I, I think he's still doing the colors out there, but um, there you go. Some um, some great stuff, and uh, if you're a fan of Aaron Lopresti out there, that would be a great, a great kit. Especially for, like, uh, the holidays or something like that. Be like, yeah, I got the, got the back cover out here. Check, check me out, people. Check me out. Although trying to stuff that into a, into a stocking would be really hard. It'd be kind of hard out there. Where are we talking about Christmas? I still need to get to uh, Thanksgiving before uh, before we do Christmas up there. You, you see all of the very early, 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 early Black, Fly Black Friday uh, stuff out there. Beer needs to learn how to talk here, people. Uh, Black Friday deals out there, so um, uh, kind of interesting, kind of interesting out there. But anyways, we need, we need to get through um, uh, Thanksgiving first. All right, where, where did Beer go one of these days? One, one of these days, uh, because because kind of one of the uh, more interesting campaigns to come out this year. Uh, very interesting how um, uh, your boy Zach uh, did this out here with uh, the Jawbreakers uh, for forever uh, Indiegogo campaign. He says is now it's now people it's now closed. Yes, indeed. Uh, let's see. Uh, should he buy Indiegogo or Kickstarter? Jim D says, buy both, he's got the money. Well, uh, maybe not now. Um, you know, you just don't have $44 billion just lying around you know, in between the couch cushions there. So, um, that might be, that might be a, a little, little hard up for that stuff right now. Although, Indiegogo probably doesn't cost that much. You know, pr probably, probably a couple hundred dollars and a ham sandwich would uh, probably pay for Indiegogo out there. But uh, that's all right. Uh, let's see, uh, the Jawbreakers for... Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, everyone. Hiya, boy. The Jawbreakers Forever Indiegogo campaign is now closed. They ended up with, holy cow, people, $124,713 uh, from 4,095 backers. So, um, there you go. He actually got probably more backers on this campaign than um, uh, maybe even the first one out there. Uh, definitely the last one, for sure. And that's because they had the... A uh, crazy zany one dollar deal out there. Uh, your boy Zach's crazy zany one dollar deal. Although it it seems like it worked out for him. Maybe 
you know, maybe it might have been double that. Maybe he could have done um, $200,000 or something like that. Maybe just made it $2. Uh, but that's all right. He did a really great job. And like he says, uh, for most of the campaign, a little more than half of the backers uh, bought the add-ons. Uh, including Bear. Bear never got the third one. So, um, uh, uh, luckily, luckily, that, that seemed to take forever. Um, but uh, there you go. So, more people added the add-ons there. Oh, which means the campaign sold, sold rather a total of just under uh, 8,300 books. So, uh, there you are. Uh, Jawbreakers Forever is well on the way to being finished. Uh, with a 100% uh, cover art, the interior line art, the interior color pages are only 68% complete. But uh, getting there, getting there and getting close. So, uh, there you are. There is... Uh, the the closed part of the Jawbreakers Forever uh, campaign out there. Uh, hello, everyone, says Marco for Anthony, and the ghost of Jiminy. What happened to Jiminy? Oh, my goodness. Uh, maybe he could actually afford a moderation staff to enforce community guidelines like updating campaigns regularly. Hmm, there we go. That's neat. <laughs> well, you know, it, it kind of depends. It really kind of depends on the um, either the artist or the campaign out there. Uh, Aaron Lepresti does a really great job of keeping people up to date. Um, I would say um, uh, Gary Shipman out there does a really good job. Um, some of the other campaigns, you know, it kind of depends. Um, you know, sometimes people don't want to put stuff out there, uh, either because they don't have any good news, or maybe because... Um, Maybe because they have bad news or something like that, but, you know, it, probably better off, you know, saying, hey, this is, you know, you, you've, you've funded the campaign here, here's what's going on, you're, uh, basically, you know, we've had this, uh, hey, going back to uh, your boy Zach here, we kind of had the uh, distinction, you know, is it, um, are, are you a backer, in other words, are you a consumer, or are you a um, producer out there, uh, kind of in the um, movie realm, I, I would say more close to the, the producer side of things than, uh, you know, people buying hot dogs out there or something like that. Because, man, oh man, if you were waiting on, um, you know, if Cash Grab, for instance, was a hot dog, you'd be you'd be starving to death out there. So, uh, I kind of a, a little bit of a difference there, but to, I, I would say beer kind of falls on the side of ha having more people uh, up there, or, uh, having more updates from people out there. Uh, rather than less. You know, even if it's bad news or something like that, it's fine. It's fine out there. Uh, let's see. Wait, Jimmy, are you okay? Are you okay, Jimmy? Are you okay? Are you okay, Jimmy? Are you okay? Are you okay, Jimmy? <laughs> uh, Marco for Anthony dreams of his demise. Oh my goodness. I mean, Jimmy continues to disappoint. Continues to disappoint by staying on this side of the ground. On this side of the ground. Yes, me. Um, let's see, what was the other one here? He had another one here. I'm bringing up. Oh, yeah, that's right, because, uh, I, let's see, did they launch at the same time? I'm not sure if they launched, like, exactly at the same time or not. But, uh, Iron Sights 3, uh, Beard never got the first two, so, um, uh, if anybody got the Iron Sights, uh, let Beard know, I heard, has heard good things about, uh, Iron Sights, but, uh, Never checked it out there, but, uh, Impossible Stars, one of the ones, one of the more controversial, <laughs> more controversial covers out there, but uh, that's all right. Uh, Iron Sights 3 and Impossible Stars 2, a combo campaign is El Closedo. Yes, indeed. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi, you boy! Uh, the Iron Sights 3 and Impossible Stars combo campaign is now closed. Uh, they've ended up. Uh, with 82,000 uh, from 1,173 backers. So, uh, you know, um, his first campaign, uh, the, the classic campaign out there, the Jawbreakers campaign, probably a little bit more well-known. Uh, Iron Sights, you know, it's got kind of a, uh, a cult following out there. Impossible Stars, uh, it's impossible to kind of uh, describe that. But uh, really good stuff. I really like the first one out there, so... Um, uh, hopefully, hopefully it gets a little bit more word of mouth uh, once once number two comes out here. And it gives the current status of both of the books. Uh, Iron Sights 3 is well on the way of being complete. All the interior art is complete, the cover uh, is being designed, and the lettering has begun. Uh, in Impossible Stars 2 is doing well. Uh, the cover, <laughs> the, um... Uh, a controversial cover out there uh, is complete. Uh, all the interior light online art is complete, and coloring has begun. I tell you, one of the um, 
uh, one of the better books out there for coloring. Uh, kind of uh, surprised Baron just a little bit uh, with Impossible Star. Did some really good coloring there. Uh, thanks. That would be from Richard, a.k.a. your boy out there. That's neat. So that's closed. Closed up, people. I'm sorry. If you wanted it, uh, it's gone. It's gone, people. It's gone. <clears throat> Let's see, Mark says, uh, I don't have to dream it was already written in the original story before Disney got a hold of it. Ah, for crying out loud. We got, we got some stuff on Disney here, just a second. Walt Disney immortalized Jiminy Cricket for future generations. I just lopped off his head and, and put it into the freezer there. There you go. Uh, let's see. Uh, then again, when was the last time you appeared? I'm pretty sure you've been locked away in the either in the vault or in the in the freezer there with uh, uh right there next to Walt, right there next to Walt. Uh, allegedly, people. Allegedly, although I I would say probably, uh, Walt, you know, gets reanimated, you know, put into the robot exoskeleton out there, and uh, you know, starts running amok in in um uh, Disney World out there. Uh, you know, trying to find Bob Chapek, like, what the hell are you doing, man? What are you doing? <laughs> that would be, that would be the end of that. Actually, we've got, <laughs> speaking of which, we've actually got some of that in the news. So stay tuned, people. Uh, stay tuned. Let's see, uh, 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 you two keep going on. Keep going on. Beer, this is, I set, I set here on doing a, doing a proper, a proper video here. Uh, also, also we've got, uh, from, um, uh oh where did it go? Uh-oh, what's going on here? Hold on, let me do the image here. Uh, do 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 What the heck's going on here? Let's see, um, we were talking about Terror in the Trenches, and, uh, they're actually done. They're actually done with it, so, uh, we're doing a lot of, um, a lot of ones here where they're all done. Let's see, uh, do 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 I don't know why it's, hmm. Interesting. Okay, there we are. Ah, there we are. He says it's done. The terror in the trenches is done. Greetings, trenchers. Greetings. Uh, it's done. The final, the final edit polish went down, and the book Lee reads rather like a dream. He says it's time to talk to the printer and move uh, from there. Uh, so he says thank you so much for getting us here. The final product is next level. I can't wait uh, to get it to you. And actually, it looks like um, looks like he put a number of the pages in the background there. That's kind of interesting. I kind of like that. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, great to see Melissa here. We we finally got both of the Lester sisters here. Bear is relieved. Whew! Thank goodness. I can't get rid of those. Gotta get rid of those pesky porn bots out here. Yes, indeed. <coughs> Uh, Walt uh, would take a shotgun to the entire board of the modern Disney. Team Walt, says Jiminy. <laughs> yes, indeed. <clears throat> or skip the crummy version altogether. Uh, well, uh, that would be the live-action one with, um, uh, uh, is it Tom Hanks? Did Tom Hanks return from Greece to make that terrible movie? I tell you. Oh, oh, here we go, here we go. Uh, 1,295 uh, backers. I almost have him to 80k. Uh, the stretch goal there to get the Dan Lawless terror print uh, with every physical copy of the book. So there you go. There is a, there is a copy of that. Actually, I can do, let me do this. Let's see if I can do it. Let's see. Do, 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 do. I can't copy it. Why can't, why can't Beer copy this? All right, let me uh, do the thing with the thing. Let's see. Let's see if this works. Uh, let's see if this works, people. Just in case. Uh, give it, give him a little bit of a bump there so you can do the... Uh, that's a nice little print there. Pretty cool. Let's see. Let's see if this works. Take off some of that stuff. And uh, there we go. Uh, there you are. <clears throat> the singing was just bad in, in a in a in a Jimmy Cricket movie. Holy cow! Or Pinocchio. I, I'm sorry, uh, the Pinocchio movie. Maybe they should do a Jimmy Cricket movie. There we go. Because it was weird. It was like a it was like a CGI slash live action. Which I don't know. Robert Zemeckis just kind of gets on this kick of um, uh, doing CGI and stuff like that. Um, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So uh, it's kind of. What was the last one that he did with uh, Steve Carell? That they had the, 
Like he was a doll or something like that. It was real life, but then he went and played with his dolls. And like, gee, I wonder why nobody watched that movie. There you go. <laughs> Don't watch it if you can avoid it, says Amy. Uh, but for anyone unfortunate enough to have seen it, uh, might still help. Yes, indeed. There you go. There you go. Never saw the live-action Pinocchio. I actually think it's only uh, one of the live-action remakes that was auto-tuned Beauty and the Beast. Ah, okay. There you are. <clears throat> there you go. Uh, thanks for all your support, uh, says the Vons Drew out here. Updates to come as we head towards printing uh, everything. Printing everything. Uh, your fiend in comics. And that would be the Vons Drew out there. So there you go. You can uh, check him out on all the... All the platforms there, Twitter and Instagram, and what's, what's the third one there? I, I don't know what the third one there is, but uh, there you go. You can you can check it out on the third one there as well. Let's see. Uh, Marco for it that he has no idea. Uh, neither neither does Bear. But that's a great print. I like that. That's pretty cool. Pretty good. That should have actually been the cover there. That would have been pretty cool. Hey, but uh, you know what? If you if you kick him over uh, to the eighty k goal. Uh, you'll get that. You'll get it absolutely free. So pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. Actually, let me do that. We did that the other time there. So uh, it's looking really good. Looking really good. I think they were talking about doing some of the um, uh, editing there a little bit there. So it apparently got all done and uh, looking really good. Really good stuff out there. All right. Do the thing with the thing. And then you do the thing. But first you got to do the thing. There we go. <coughs> It would be helpful if you do the thing. Because otherwise, oh boy, oh boy. And then it all just falls apart. Uh, four days, actually three days. Uh, three days, people, uh, remain for what could be George Perez's final cover. Uh, there are only four days left uh, for Mark Bolton's loose thread. Why am I talking? I can just show it. Ay, ay, ay. <clears throat> uh, that could be said by a lot of things. Bear, why are you talking? Uh, there are only four days left, three days left, on Mark Poulton's Loose Threads, a story that tells you what happens to comic book characters when their series are cancelled. Uh, the book uh, features a jam cover uh, by the late, the great, the legendary uh, George Perez, an interior art artist, uh, Cesar uh, Madero out there. Madero? I hope I pronounced that right. I apologize, Cesar. Uh, grab a piece of history, uh, as this could be the last George Perez cover ever. And actually, let me just go ahead and put that in the chat as well. Do that. All right, do the thing with the thing. Copy link. Why didn't it let me do that before? I don't know. Gotta do all the things. You said it, Amy. You said it. Otherwise, oh, for crying out loud, what the heck? Uh, hold on. What's going on here? Okay, do the thing. The thing, and then you do the thing, and then you do the thing. <laughs> One of these days, no, it still doesn't. Why is it giving all this gobbledygook? Uh, anyways, uh, go check it out. Uh, go check it out. Uh, um, loose uh, threads out there. Hopefully, that isn't being shadow beans. I am the go go. What the hell's going on with you? What the heck is going on? Don't kill the golden goose. Um, actually, um, uh, Bianca had a really good, uh, Bianca fights the zombies, uh, go check out, uh, his chat, not right now, not right now, but, uh, he actually had a really good, a good take on that, um, I, I think that was from, uh, last night, so a really good take on that, so there you go, I kind of like the cover, nice, uh, nice colors, There's some really great colors in there, so, uh, very cool, a very, very cool indeed, all right, let me get back to it here, let me get back to the thing here. Let's see, where are we? There you are. Uh, there you go. For sure. For sure, gotta do all the things. <laughs> uh, hey, it's a little bit easier with the uh, two, two monitor setup here, rather than just trying to do it on the one here. All right, we actually have a an update. An update from last week here. We we're talking a little bit about the um, $320 lock that you can pick in like 30 seconds. Actually, like five seconds or something like that. Well, Level has responded, people, uh, to the lock picking claims. His Level Plus exceeds the standards, people. It doesn't meet them. It exceeds them. And, uh, you know, our good friends here at um, Apple Insider, they may earn an affiliate commission, blah, 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 blah. Uh, that might be why they're covering, covering their tracks here. Uh, William Gallagher, Gallagher out there. 
and the developer of Light Level Lock Plus, uh, decries the exciting headline. Well, thank you. It was an exciting headline. Uh, about lock picking, and says its device has been granted the best possible grade uh, in every category by the BHMA standards body. Uh, that comes after a response uh, from a YouTuber who demonstrated uh, picking the Level Lock Plus, as reported by Apple Insider and Bear. Uh, the methods uh, were used in the same attention tool and bump key approach that works on regular locks, and Level confirmed that. Oh yeah, oh of course, of course our lock can be picked. Uh, for compatibility, Level uses a Type C lock cylinder from a major industrial supplier and is commonly available in hundreds of lock brands on the markets. That's neat. The only way to limit vulnerabilities around the key uh, is to remove it entirely. Well, it is a key that you can open with your phone, so you really don't even need the key in there. Uh, unless your phone dies or something, you leave your phone inside or something. Uh, maybe you can do it with your watch, I'm not sure, but... Um, uh, kind of part of their home kit out there. So, you know, really all you need is your, your your phone out there. You really don't even need your keys. That's the entire point of a $320 freaking lock out here. Uh, but, but as they say, people, as they say, it's got the best possible grade in every category, people. Well, it takes you a couple paragraphs to get down to it. But regarding the lock uh, hardware, the company reports that we received the highest association for... Strength, durability, and finish. Oh, okay, okay. Not not actually picking the lock beer. Uh, there you go. So anyways, if you want to want to waste a whole bunch of money, uh, there you go. You get a, a fancy lock that can be picked uh, just like anybody else. Just like anybody else, people. Yes, indeed. All right. <clears throat> For sure, I agree with that. Well, this is a very important important news story here for beer. Uh, many, people, many people realize about the... Uh, I, I think Brandon was draining down the strategic oil reserve, but many people don't know. Many people don't know that we have a strategic cheese reserve out there, people. Yes, indeed. So let's get right on into it uh, from um, a visual capitalist out there in Omari uh, Walrish. Walrish? Walrish? What? Walrish. Eh, whatever the heck. Uh, how big is the cheese stockpile out there? Well, it is huge, people. Uh, it's, oops, let me do the thing. There we go. It's huge, people. It's that big, people. Holy cow. Holy moly moly. Yes, indeed. It's almost as big as the Statue of Liberty out there. At 1.5 billion pounds of U.S. cheese in the stockpile. Uh, how big is the U.S. cheese stockpile, it asks. As of August 2022, the U.S. had 1.5 billion pounds of cheese in cold storage around the country. That's around $3.4 billion worth of cheese. And, um, you know, I suppose you could make a, a very interesting heist movie out of that, you know. Uh, the Great Cheese Heist. Oh boy, it would, uh, you know, probably all the rats out there would be thrilled about that. Rats and mice. <clears throat> Uh, using data from the USDA, uh, this graphic looks at just how big the U.S. cheese stockpile has gotten over the past few years and compares it to notable landmarks to help put things in perspective. You know, when Bear is trying to visualize a giant piece of cheese, uh, you know, you gotta put it up with the uh, Leaning Tower of Pisa or the Statue of Liberty or uh, maybe even the Eiffel Tower out there. <clears throat> Why so much cheese? Well, well, uh, over the last 30 years, uh, milk production in the U.S. has increased by 50%. Uh, yet, while milk production has climbed, milk consumption has declined. You gotta drink your milk, people. Uh, in 2004, Americans consumed the equivalent of about uh, 0.57 cups of milk per day. Half a cup of milk? That's it? Ah, oh, come on, people. Uh, by 2018, the average milk consumption had dropped to 0.33 cups. Ah, uh, in response to this predicament, uh, the U.S. government and dairy companies have been purchasing this extra milk and storing it as cheese for years. Uh, so where does one store uh, such a large amount of cheese? Well, well, people, let beer tell you. A sizable portion of the stockpile is stored in a massive underground warehouse, warehouse, a former limestone quarry outside of Springfield, Missouri. Yes, indeed. I guess the Simpsons have a little bit of that. The stockpile keeps growing, and apart from a small dip in the 2021, uh, the little bit of a, the woo flu out there, the American stockpile of cheese has increased steadily over the past five years. 
Uh, between April 2018 and April 2022, uh, the U.S. cheese holdings increased by 130 million pounds uh, to reach that 1.5 billion pounds. Or 1.48. After climbing up to 1.52 billion pounds in July, the stockpile settled once again at 1.48 at the end of August 2022. They must have had a, a, a mice infection in there. Uh, is the cheese stockpile here to stay, it asks. Attempts have been made to get rid of the cheese stockpile. Why? Why would you get rid of the cheese stockpile? I tell you. Uh, over the years, the government has established a food welfare programs and encouraged milk consumption in schools throughout the country. Uh, yet, despite their best efforts to dis decrease the sur surplus, uh, the American cheese stockpile continues uh, to grow, people. Ah. As domestic consumers continue to decrease their milk consumption, a uh, beer is just drinking water. Uh, beer is uh, uh, as uh, beer recently found out that he is intolerant. People, I, I apologize. Beer is intolerant, uh, uh, lactose intolerant out there. Uh, as domestic consumers continue to decrease their milk consumption and switch out a uh, dairy milk for milk alternatives. What? Uh, like almond or oat milk, uh, how much bigger will this cheese stockpile get before the government comes up with an alternative solution uh, to deal with its surplus of dairy? Uh, maybe, maybe we could just ship it to Ukraine. I'm sure they could use some cheese over there in Ukraine. I just, maybe you could just kind of hide behind that a little bit, you know, and, you know, pow, 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 you know, like, oh, gotta get behind the cheese. Get behind, get behind some cheddar. Gotta get behind some cheddar out there. Uh, you know you can't you can't send the uh, Swiss cheese over there. Uh, unfortunately, they are they are neutral. They are neutral, so uh, you can't send uh, Swiss cheese to uh, the Ukraine out there. Yes, indeed. That's a that's a crazy. Uh, you, you always have these kind of weird ones where it's like uh, you know what was the one that we did like uh, a while back where it was they were trying to trying to uh, describe the size of an asteroid and it was like half the size of a giraffe and it's like. How, how do you even come up with that? How, how does that even compute in any way? But uh, anyways, we had a an asteroid nearly nearly hit the U.S. that was um, uh, half the size of a giraffe. It's true, people. It is true out there. All right, let's get to it, people. I know everybody's been waiting on this because I'd help if um, we could see it actually. And they did it. It's finally headed off into the sunset. Our national nightmare is over, people. Oops, that's not it. Where am I? HBO, a kid, uh, the, the Z-Man comes out, uh, just swinging, just, just, you know, tearing things down left and right. HBO cancels a Westworld in a shock decision. Well, it's not very shocking to bear. It was uh, dead after the second season there. Holy cow. Man, oh man, what a... What, I, I, you know, you, you come out with a great show and then you just kind of run right into the wall. I mean, it was a great first season and then they just said, you know what? You know what, everybody's going broke, but uh, you know what we should do? We should go woke on the Westworld there. Uh, the acclaimed, acclaimed? I, mean, I don't know, oh, uh, the Hollywood Reporter. And James Hibbert out here. The acclaimed, question mark? Uh, Sci-fi drama is considered a uh, finished people after its recent fourth season, uh, despite creators hoping for a fifth season. Uh, to, what do you need to wrap up? Uh, didn't they go to, like, um... What was it? They, they went out of... The, the, the title of the show is called Westworld, so it's supposed to be, you know, a, a theme park out there of, um, you know, the robots out there in the Wild West. You go shoot the robots and do whatever and have a great time. And the robots, uh, uh, you know, uh, gain consciousness and, uh, and they decide to take over the world and everything. Well, they got out of the park and what did they... They went to, like, I don't know... Singapore or something like that. So the, the the third or fourth season just took place in Singapore, and then they had half of the show taking place in like I don't know Nazi Germany or something like that. All oh, very subtle there. So uh, and there you go. They they took the Westworld out of Westworld and are shocked. They are shocked that it's canceled. People very shocked out there. HBO has switched off Westworld. Uh, the network has decided to cancel the sci-fi drama after its recent fourth season. Uh, it's unexpected fate, question mark, uh, for a series that once, once, once considered uh, HBO's biggest tentpoles. 
an acclaimed mystery bro uh, box drama that racked up 54 Emmy nominations, including a supporting actress win uh, for Thady Newton. Wait, they, they had 54 nominations, but only one win. That's not a, not a good, uh, not a good uh, ratio there. <clears throat> uh, yes, they are hoarding your cheese. It is true. Uh, cheese is great, but Domino's forgot to take online pizza orders. What? Oh, forgot how to take online pizza orders. Well, uh, you know, it's Domino's. What can you do? What can you or or Papa John's or Papa John's? I tell you, <laughs> the saga of Papa. Well, what's the guy's creator name? Uh, obviously, it's John. But uh, John, John, what's his face out there with uh, formerly of a uh, uh, Papa John's out there? He got kind of a uh, in some situations there. That was that was kind of interesting. <clears throat> Ah, yes, indeed. Uh, what is Marco for Anthony saying? Kids and teens are less likely to have it, but uh, many people eventually become lactose intolerant in adulthood. Uh, some healthcare providers view lactose intolerance as a normal human a normal human condition. <sighs> well, anyways, no Papa John's gets my orders tonight. Well, there you go. At least they get the little um, a, a little uh, pepper in there that you can put in there. I don't know if they still do the dipping sauces or not. They're pretty good. Why are we talking about pizzas? A Hollywood reporter here, Westworld. Last month, a co-creator, Jonathan Nolan, um, many people know uh, Christopher Nolan out there, it's his brother, uh, said in an interview that he'd hoped uh, HBO would give the series a fifth season to wrap up the show's a very ambitious story that uh, was very, very ambitious, uh, which has chronicled a robot uprising that challenged the fate of humanity. A uh, quote, we always plan for a fifth and final season. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, guess what? Uh, we're uh, still in conversations with the network. We very much uh, hope to make them. Uh, Co-creator Lisa Joy likewise said the series had always been working uh, towards a specific ending. Uh, John and Jonah, Jonah and I uh, have always... Why does he say Jonah? Uh, Jonathan. John, John. I don't know. Come on, lady. Uh, and I have always had an ending in mind uh, that we hope to reach. We have not quite reached it yet. Well, I've got news for you, lady. Uh, you're not going to get there. You're not going to get there. Garlic sauce. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> we started talking about pizza when we started talking about the surplus and the National Strategic Cheese Reserve and the depletion of all these salmon. What? What? Hold on now. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. There's a salmon, number one, there's a salmon reserve? And number two, it's gone? What? Oh my goodness. Uh, oh no, Domino's is being goofy. Ah, uh, Domino's, what can you do? What can you do? <clears throat> People just don't care about the Westworld story. That's right, beer will continue regardless. Uh, yet, linear ratings for the pricey series uh, fell off shortly uh, for its third season, and they dropped even further for season four. Gee, I wonder why. I wonder why. You know, Beer was doing this last time. He was talking about, um, what was it? He was talking about uh, uh, Avatar, and everybody, you know, everybody else, uh, what was that in Mike's chat? You know, they were talking about um, uh, uh, Namor. It's like, oh, for crying out loud, nobody's going to go see this, this silly Black Panther movie. I think I think Avatar is going to do a lot better there, but uh, I, I missed I completely missed out. So now everybody's talking about cheese while Bear's talking about Westworld. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, we are listening and ranting at the same time, multitasking. That's all right. Domino's and Anthony's are the worst. What is Anthony's? Is Anthony's a chain? I don't know. I don't. Bear, uh, uh, when he used to be able to eat pizza, uh, I, I tried to do the local stuff. You know, the chain stuff. It's all just kind of. Yeah, you know, it, it's all frozen stuff. You know, you, you want to get the fresh stuff out there. It's great. All right, where was beer? I, uh, it fell off for the third season. I wonder why. It went woke in the second season. Uh, Westward, uh, West World's uh, critic average on Rotten Tomatoes likewise declined from the mid-80s for its first two seasons to the mid-70s for the latter two. Gee, I wonder why. Uh, fans increasingly griped that the show had become uh, confusing, entangled in its mythology, and lacked characters to root for, and went woke as well. Uh, looming over all this is the fact that Warner Brothers Discovery CEO, the Z-Man out there, uh, has pledged aggressive cost-cutting, uh, though the network insiders maintain that saving money was not a factor in the show's cancellation. Uh, uh, probably a little bit from column A and a little bit from column B out there. 
Uh, still, HBO and increasingly other cable networks and streamers uh, typically like to give a major series creators a time to craft an ending for serialized shows uh, as it keeps its subscribers from getting upset. And you can see the uh, years-long fandom outrage after Deadwood was axed. A pretty good show. A lot of cursing in that show. Uh, plus, a show that can tell a beginning, a middle, and an end arguably increases its perceived value as a streaming and home video product uh, compared to a title that feels unfinished. Uh, they probably should have just uh, uh, ended it after the first season, and uh, the second season was just, you know, Bernard's crazy, crazy dreams out there uh, that didn't really matter anyway, so uh, that's probably should have went out. But uh, man, oh man, golly, they had a great show and then just completely... Completely killed it. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the fourth season of Westworld wasn't entirely a cliffhanger. However, uh, its uh, final moments uh, could be said to be rather ambiguous. Uh, let's see, and it felt like its show could have ended there. Uh, well, it probably could have ended in the first season. Uh, HBO statement, over the past four seasons, Lisa and, jo Lisa and Jonathan have taken viewers on a mind-bending odyssey, uh, raising the bar at every step. Eh, uh, we are tremendously grateful uh, to them, along with their immensely talented cast, producers, and crew, and all of our partners at Kilter Films, Bad Robots, Warner Brothers Television. It's been a thrill to join them on this journey, and now you're done. Goodbye. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. Uh, and here's a uh, Kilter film statement. Uh, making West World, Westworld rather, uh, has been one of the highlights of our career. Uh, we are deeply grateful to the extraordinary cast and crew for the creating of uh, these indelible characters and brilliant worlds. Well, actually, it was um, uh, Michael Crichton that did that, but that's all right. Uh, we've been privileged to tell these stories about the future of consciousness, consciousness both human and beyond. In the brief window of time before AI overlords forbid us from doing so. Is he saying? I think they're saying, people. I think they're saying that the Z-Man is actually an AI overlord. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. A very, a very interesting out there. <clears throat> Uh, HBO says still has several uh, tentpole dramas. You people can probably uh, pick up on that. Beer hasn't seen uh, House of the Dragon. Succession uh, looks boring. The White Lotus, I heard it's funny. Euphoria, man, oh man, I tell you, that show. Um, uh, Beer saw maybe like one episode of that. Um, or maybe just like part of it. The, 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 what's her name? Uh, uh, how do you pronounce it? Is it Zendia? Zendaya? Zendaya out there. Uh, she does a really good job, but the rest, I mean, what a, what a downer. What a downer of a show that is. And the zombie apocalypse thriller, uh, not at all woke at all, of The Last of Us. Why are they doing that? Why, why would they make a show? They've already got the video game. Why do they need a, why do they need a show? Uh, also, just like the show's frequently restructured androids, it would be foolish to assume there will never be any more Westworld ever. Uh, if Dead World can get a movie 12 years after the series finished, it's always possible, people. Uh, Westworld, likewise, uh, will be rebooted. Well, it was rebooted. It was a movie by Michael Crichton. And then uh, HBO uh, did a great job uh, 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 um, grabbing that baton and then... You know, before they got to the finish line, they tripped and fell over, uh, and they just died in the gutter. So, uh, there you are. Uh, there is Westworld out there. So, uh, there you are. Uh, the, the charismatically challenged uh, Evan Rachel Wood out there. A uh, poor lady. Uh, she did a really good job as, as kind of originally, and then kind of was like, okay, now I'm the AI overlord. Me boop, beep, boop, beep, boop. And they, I was like, they, they had it, uh, spoiler alerts, they had it at the very end of the... The second season there where it's like, it looked like they, they had killed off her character. Beer was like, yes, yes, finally, finally you did it. I didn't think that you had the nuts to do it, but you did it. And, and then she came back and it's like, ah, uh, why, why? And then, and then what's her, what's her face? Uh, Tessa, what's her name? T Tessa Thompson? Is that it? Um, yeah, terrible, terrible, terrible actress. Um, zero charisma whatsoever. What a so ever out there. Uh, hey, Tank Ferret, good to see you. Great to see Tank out here. Yes, indeed. All right, moving moving briskly along. Well, let me take a drink here. Of water, people. Ah. 
uh, from comicbook.com, and uh, Jamie love it out here. I love it. <clears throat> uh, his Star Wars uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi writer reveals his frustration with the Disney Plus series. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi writer Andrew Stanton uh, admits to feeling some frustration when writing for Disney+. Plus. Gee, I wonder why. Uh, Stanton is best known for uh, writing on Pixar films, uh, such as Finding Nemo and WALL-E, uh, the latter of which won an Academy Award and is the first Pixar movie uh, to be added to the, you know, <laughs> uh, the, the stuck-up snobs over there at the Criterion Collection. <clears throat> Uh, however, uh, while working on the uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi series, uh, Stanton felt constrained, a, a constraint uh, he hadn't felt in his other writing work. Uh, speaking with io9, Stanton revealed how it uh, could be um, uh, to write dialogue for an iconic character like uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader, but the pressure of always having to ask, uh, does it fit the canon? Uh, yeah, you gotta kinda do that. Uh, it feels a bit too sweet, he says. Uh, the reason that happens is because people care. You people care too much. If you didn't care so much, people, uh, th this poor writer would, you know, he wouldn't be tearing his hair out. He'd just care too much. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, but also uh, kind of doesn't allow sometimes uh, things to venture beyond where maybe they should tell a better story. So it can sometimes really handicap uh, what I think are better narrative options. Well, I'm sure you're just a better writer than George Lucas. Actually, I take that back. You probably are a better writer than George Lucas. <laughs> <clears throat> and so I was frustrated. Not a lot, but I felt it was... Uh, wasn't as conductive to the story, so I love it when something like Andor is in a safe spot. I don't know, people. You tell me. Is Andor a, a, a great series or not? Uh, and it can do, uh, just do whatever the heck it wants. Uh, but I felt, you know, Joby, uh, Harold, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi co-writer and executive producer, uh, to his credit, I uh, kept the torch alive uh, to keep uh, trying to thread the needle so that the story wouldn't suffer, uh, but it would please all of the people that were trying to keep it canon, but I got some moments in there that I'm very happy with. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, did cause some debate within the Star Wars fandom about certain aspects of the canon. Uh, those include how many people uh, know about Darth Vader and that he is a fallen Jedi Knight. And Obi-Wan's old Padawan, uh, Anakin Skywalker. Mm, pardon me, people. Uh, that's an issue born out of writing a series uh, set between two major foundational film trilogies, about two of the primary characters in those trilogies. Well, I uh, is a... You know, uh, fancies himself to be a sometimes writer out there. Uh, probably it would be more the fact that um, you told, you've already told the, the best part of the story out there. I mean, you don't want to come back and say, okay, this is the third best part of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, no, you, you want to do the, the best parts there. They've already done it. You know, they've done the, you know, the original film out there where they kind of clashed a little bit. And then you've got to flash back a little bit with the prequels out there. So, uh, you've already done the best, the best stuff. Now they're just trying to pick up pieces where it's like, you know, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, 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 you know, gets a better discount on his insurance or something like that. So, uh, you know, it's not really, you know, it just, you can't really make a better story than the one that they already did there. That it sounds like that's what he was trying to do, and then they couldn't do that because, well, the events already happened and you couldn't take it in a different direction. So uh, that's what happens when you're trying to do uh, prequels like that. Uh, as Stanton alludes, uh, Endor doesn't have that problem. Uh, instead, it follows a character who's only had one previous experience in a spin off movie, uh, though rarely experienced. Uh, through rarely explored uh, corners of the Star Wars universe, distant from the main thrust of the St uh, Skywalker saga. Uh, uh, conversely, that lack of iconic characters and connections to Star Wars, uh, primary trilogies of trilogies, primary trilogy of trilogy, what? Hold on. <clears throat> Let me read that again. Uh, conversely, the lack of iconic characters and connections uh, to Star Wars' primary trilogy of trilogies, Oh, that's right, because they, okay, I got, okay, I'm like, what the hell? Uh, maybe why Andor isn't drawing the same number of viewers on Disney Plus as previous Star Wars shows, or maybe because Andor really, uh, is Bear hears it, um, not really a Star Wars, it's not very fun, uh, it's very kind of down and kind of dour, plus, uh, what was the, what was the movie, um, 
what was the name of the movie? Um, the, 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 what was it? Um, it wasn't the solo, the, the one that came before that, the, the kind of spinoff movie. I can't remember it. Anyways, they, I, I don't think that was a very well-received movie other than the very end where they actually showed Darth Vader. That was actually a pretty cool sequence. The rest of it was like, eh, they're all going to die. Who cares? Uh, spoiler alert, people. Uh, they're all going to die. Who cares? <clears throat> Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi is streaming now on Disney+. Plus. Go check it out, people. And Andor debuts in new weekly episodes. Wednesdays on Disney. But you know what? Uh, on, on Wednesdays, uh, we hope to have you people here instead of watching uh, Andor. Andor out there. <clears throat> Let's see. I've heard Andor is okay, but isn't getting eyes on it because of how bad Boba Fett and Obi-Wan were. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, many people, oh, good to see Grant here. Uh, many people might be getting to where I was some years ago. Uh, that, uh, that does happen when, uh, when time changes. Oh, by the way, time is going to change. Time is going to change. Yes, indeed. Uh, and also because who really needs to know more about pretty much a one-node character? Yeah, you know, um, uh, Lucas actually was pretty smart with the prequels. Um, you know, I don't know how many, uh, uh prequel movies out there there were, um, I know he did that with um, uh, the, the second Indiana Jones movie. They kind of went backwards in time there. Uh, they pretty much uh, told the story. I mean, you really, you, uh, there really wasn't much else that, you know, because the J.J. The, uh, uh, J. Abrams one, you know, it, it basically was just a rehash of the, of the original Star Wars movie. So, you know, there really wasn't much there. They should have just kind of went with something different. And, you know, maybe people aren't just... They, they like the characters there of the, the Star Wars, and anytime you kind of go outside those boundaries, it's, you know, it's not going to bring in the same people, so they keep trying to bring back, you know, the one that, oh, everybody loves Boba Fett. Oh, everybody loves um, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi out there, so, uh, I don't know. I, I thought that maybe the Obi-Wan Kenobi, was, wasn't that supposed to be a movie at some point? I think it was supposed to be a movie, and then they decided to put it on Disney+, Plus. so, uh, you know, probably, probably trying to, Milk, milk their streaming service there. Uh, we're talking about milk today. Talking about, we're, we're bringing it, bringing it a full, full circle out here. Yes, indeed. A uh, rogue one. Thank you. I couldn't remember. <laughs> Probably blocked it out of Bear's memory there. Uh, it really wasn't that much memorable. Uh, as its own container narrative, uh, a Marco Ferranti light rogue one. It didn't really need uh, any more added into it. Well, they're going back. They're gonna. Uh, don't they follow one of the characters that wasn't, wasn't, uh, is his name Andor? Is, is, is the main character there named Andor? I, I thought it was like a planet or something like that, but, um, anyways, they, they follow the character there in the, uh, in the Rogue One movie who, spoiler alert, people actually die, so it's like, okay, we see this guy and, you know, he's gonna die, so, yay? <laughs> Yay, I guess. I, I, okay. Anyways, I, I'm sure it was pretty good. I, they probably should have kept doing those sorts of kind of one-off uh, Star Wars movies like that. Uh, probably would have gotten a little bit better. They probably uh, were coasting along with everybody thinking that it was, you know, another, you know, that it was, you know, the sequel to J.J. Abrams' movie there when it really wasn't. So, um, uh, probably bad marketing to begin with. Uh, but, you know, uh, just, you know, go to a different part of the universe and tell kind of a different uh, a different story. Or, you know, go back in time or something like that. That would be kind of interesting. There you go. It has to be hard writing a series about characters without writing a series about the character. Yes, it probably is. Uh, the daughter of one of the people who made uh, the plans for the DS teamed up with uh, Andor to steal them and get them to Leia. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, it was, uh, th again, that was, um, it was really interesting. It was kind of an interesting movie, but uh, they they cut a lot of stuff out of it. So, um, uh, that, gosh, I, for I forget the character's name there. What was it? Rezo? Rezo? Something like that. Uh, they, <laughs> they, cut, they cut, like, so much out of there that they cut really uh, a lot of her, her motivation. It sounded like, they, it sounded like they had her... Uh, doing different things that um, kind of made her character a little bit more sense, and they cut a lot of that out, and it kind of made her kind of just kind of um, 
you know, kind of a one-note meanie out there. And, uh, you know, didn't really didn't really do her character any favor. I'm trying to remember her. Uh, was it Felice, Felicity, something or another? Anyways, the, the actress out there. A good actress, but, uh, yeah, just not not that great for um, uh, for that show out there. All right, people, I know I know everybody's excited. Everybody is exciting for, you know, getting out there. Bear has voted multiple, multiple times already, but uh, uh, that's all right. I still got a little bit more time to go here. Unfortunately, though, uh, Oprah Winfrey, a uh, Bax... Max Quato out there over Dr. Oz in the Pennsylvania Senate race. Woo! A uh, Mehmet Oz, uh, by the way, uh, Deadline, and Ted Johnson. Ted Johnson out there. A uh, Mehmet Oz is running for the Senate in Pennsylvania. Uh, got a big boost in his TV career uh, from the Oprah. Uh, but she's not lending that support to his political ambitions. The poor guy. Uh, Winfrey said that if she, uh, if she lived in Pennsylvania, uh, she would support uh, Quattro uh, and his uh, lump out there, uh, John Fetterman. Uh, weighing in with uh, just days left, people. Just days left. Uh, Winfrey said that there were many reasons why she was supporting Fetterman. Uh, 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 just give us one. Just give us one. Uh, but also noted uh, that she backed uh, the Democrats in other races across the country. Ah, no surprise there. Uh, in a statement, uh, Winfrey said, At the beginning of the midterm campaigns, I said it was up to the citizens to vote uh, for who would represent them. Okay, well, there you go. Thank you, Miss Winfrey. We appreciate your time. Oh, wait, no, she continues. <sighs> uh, if I lived in Pennsylvania... <laughs> I, I would have already cast my vote for John uh, Fetterman, a.k.a. Quato. Uh, there are clear choices out there and some dynamic candidates who are working to represent the values uh, that so many of us hold dear, uh, like inclusion, uh, compassion, and community. Uh, I, so I ask that voters use a discernment and choose widely uh, for the democracy of our country. Well, lady, it is not a democracy. Uh, it Hanging by the tatters there, but it's still a republic. You know, um, I, I don't think that 51% of the country should be able to uh, uh, take away your rights. Uh, that's just kind of Bear's thought, uh, but he could be wrong. Uh, Winfrey announced her support during a virtual town hall on voting where she was joined by uh, some representative over there. Uh, Fetterman's campaign quickly touted the Winfrey support. Oprah knows Dr. Oz uh, very well and declined to support. I uh, decided rather to support us for, quote, many reasons. The best November surprise, the campaign wrote. Well, actually, your November surprise was that horrible, horrible debate. Uh, the Fetterman uh, slash Quato Oz out there. Uh, by the way, uh, Bear, Bear calls him Quato out there. I don't know if people have seen the, um, uh, what was that, uh, a Total Recall movie out there. You know, Arnold goes in, you know, he's trying to find the, the rebel leader out there, and they got the guy, and he's like, all right, come into, come into the room here, and we'll show you where Quato is. And he walks into the room, and it's like, uh, well, it's just me and you. Where's this, where's this Quato person out there? And, you know, the guy opens up his shirt there. There's Quato! Ah! Open your mind! So, that, that, that's why Beer. Beer calls him Quato out there. While there is great debate over the value of celebrity endorsements, a Winfrey support when she was the top ranked when she was the top ranked uh, TV talk, ho talk show host uh, was credited with helping launch a Barack Obama's pres presidential campaign in the 2008 cycle. Uh, back in 2018, Oprah uh, appeared on the campaign trail with Stacey the Tank Abrams uh, running for governor in Georgia, uh, which she won by the way. And the talk show host even went door-to-door -door canvassing. Uh, but Abrams lost twice uh, to the race uh, to Brian Kemp. Uh, and she is trailing in the polls for this year's rematch. I tell you what, any time that those two are together, it probably uh, it shifts uh, the, the gravitational balance of the earth just slightly there. Uh, but the uh, Fetterman Oz race is a bit different given Winfrey's long history with Oz. Uh, she is credited with starting his TV a career, as he appeared as a health expert on her show. Uh, his series was then launched through her company, Harpo Productions. Uh, but Oz's alignment with Donald Trump, ooh, orange man bad, Urgh. 
uh, puts him at odds with Oprah Winfrey's politics. Uh, she has so far stayed out of the race, as scrutiny focused on the extent to which Oz provided a national TV platform uh, for questionable medical products and claims. Well, wait a minute. Hold on, Well, Her production company wasn't... Isn't that Oprah who's uh, uh, putting out their questionable medical products and claims? Question mark? A Fetterman's campaign has tried to counter Oz's celebrity status by portraying him as an out-of-touch opportunist. Uh, Oprah didn't endorse a candidate in neighboring state, uh, Wes Moore, the Democrat nominee for governor of Maryland. Oh, did endorse, I apologize. Uh, Moore hosted a show on the Oprah Winfrey Network and Winfrey taped an ad and appeared at a campaign event for him during the primary. Uh, Moore is ahead of the polls over his Republican rival who has Trump's endorsement. Well, gee, it's in Maryland. Gee, I wonder why. Hmm. Uh, on Tuesday, Winfrey also announced her support for a number of other, uh, uh, almost, I almost said demonic, a Democratic of midterm candidates, blah, 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 blah. Of uh, Val Demings, really? Oh my goodness. She, she, I, 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 some, one of these days, hopefully when she loses, we'll have to show that silly campaign ad that she, she's like walking. There's like a screen behind her. So I don't know if she's on like a treadmill or something like that, but she's like walking. She's walking, kind of like in profile. I'm walking, walking. And, and it's like showing all her quote unquote glorious accomplishments. I mean, it's like, oh, I was a police person. Then I went to the representatives. And that's basically it. But she's like walking. I'm walking. Look at all these accomplishments. I am walking. I am moving forward. Ay, ay, ay. Ay. Please, please, please. And Beto. Beto O'Rourke. <laughs> According to the New York Post, Oz has said that uh, he asked Winfrey to stay out of the race. Uh, his campaign released a statement to Politico saying that Oz loves Oprah and respects the fact that they have a different politics. Uh, he believes we need more balance and less extremism in Washington. Well, good luck with that. Good luck with that, Mr. Oz. Good luck, I tell you. <clears throat> Here comes Oprah. Oh, my goodness. The reasons. <laughs> there, there are plenty of reasons. Plenty. I mean, you know, not the fact that he ran outside one night and... Um, you know, uh, uh, stuck a shotgun in a guy's face one time. That, that's, I'm, uh, that's, let bygones be bygones. <clears throat> All right. Well, we've made it to the end of the show because I know everybody out there. You know, we talk, we talk about, you know, this or that. Uh, some fun news, uh, the cheese and all that sort of stuff. And talk a little bit of Star Wars stuff. Oh, nobody cared about Westworld, but that's all right, that's all right. Uh, uh, talk about many, many campaign updates out there comic book campaign updates out there. But we know, Bear knows his audience well. He knows his audience well. We know what you're here for. It's it's the uh, crypto talk. Yes, indeed. Web inventor, I, th I thought it was, I thought it was Al Gore. A web inventor, a Tim Berners-Lee, wants to ignore Web3. Web3 is not the web at all. Uh, this would be from CNBC and Ryan Brown out here. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> From Lisbon, Portugal. The creator of the web, uh, co-creator with Al Gore out there, uh, isn't sold, what, on crypto visionaries plan for the future, and says we should ignore it. Holy cow, the creator of the web said that. Uh, Tim Berners-Lee, the Britter, British rather, computer scientist, credited with inventing the World Wide Web in 1989, uh, said Friday that he doesn't view Pardon me for you, people. Doesn't view blockchain as a viable solution for building the next iteration of the internet. He has his own web decentralization project called Solid. When you want to, when you want to decentralize something, you call it Solid. I guess it is time for Web 4.0. <laughs> uh. hmm, ignoring developing technology sounds scientific. Well, uh, uh, you know. We'll get to that. It's important to clarify in order to discuss the impacts of new technology, he says. Uh, you have to understand what the terms mean when we're discussing actually mean beyond the buzzwords. It's a real shame, in fact, that the actual Web3 name was taken by the Ethereum folks. Urgh. That was Ethereum. I tell you what, poor Gary Shipman out there with their NFT hackers. 
uh, Ethereum folks for the stuff that they're doing with the blockchain. In fact, Web3 is not the web at all. Bum, 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 bum. A web 3 is a nebulous term in the tech world I used to describe a hypothetical future version of the internet that's more decentralized than it is today and not dominated by a handful of powerful players such as Amazon, Microsoft, and Google out there. So break them up. That's all we gotta do. I just break them up. What is that? Like, uh, section, whatever, section 2, 240 or something like that. I just pull that out. It involves a few technologies, including the blockchain, the cryptocurrencies, and our good friends out here, the NFTs. Oh, while breaking our personal data out of big tech's clutches is an ambition shared by Bernard's Lees, he's not convinced a blockchain, the distributed letter, ledger rather, a technology that underpins cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, will be the solution. That is a run-on sentence, man. A blockchain protocols may be good for some things, but they're not good for solid. Urgh. A web decentralization project led by Bernard's Lees, he says. They're too slow. Uh, this is true. We've talked about that in the past. Too expensive. Boy, oh boy, is that the case. And too public. Uh, personal data stores have to be fast, cheap, and private. Uh, that, would, that would be helpful. Ignore that Web3 stuff. Random Web3 that was built on the blockchain, he added. We're not using that for solid. No way. <laughs> uh, Bernard Lee said that people often complete, uh, conflict rather, a Web3 with Web3.0. Bear does it all the time. Uh, his own personal proposal uh, for reshaping the internet. His new startup, Interrupt. Why do they keep just misspelling all this stuff? It's crazy. I, I, it's like people can't spell these days. Uh, although, uh, you probably wouldn't want Beer to spell stuff. It'd be very interesting to see Beer in a spelling bee out there. That'd be... <laughs> B-E-E. -E. There we go. H-O-N-E-Y. B. S-O-S-A-L... M-O-N. That's all Bear's got. Uh, aims to give users control of their own data, including how it's accessed and stored. The company raised a, a, just a small $30 million. That's actually, man, that's like half a rug pull right there. <laughs> you can probably find that, you know, somebody somebody got scammed out of $30 million. That's, that's nothing. Uh, a million in funding in December. <clears throat> uh, Bernard's Lee says that our personal data is siloed by a handful of big tech platforms, like our good friends at Google and Facebook and that use us to lock into their platforms. And the result was a big debt race, where the a winner was the one corporation that controlled the most data and the losers were everybody else. Well, I'm sorry, people. I, I apologize that we're all losers out here, but uh, according to this guy, according to the inventor of the internet, eh, whatever. I, I'm sure Al Gore would say different things. His new startup aims to address this uh, through three ways. A global uh, single sign-on feature that lets anyone log in from anywhere. Uh, that doesn't sound creepy at all. Uh, Login IDs that allow users to share their data with others. That doesn't sound creepy at all. And a common universal API that lets apps pull data from any source. That's actually a good idea. Uh, Bernard's Lees is not the only notable tech figure with doubts about Web3 that you can include beer. Is Bear a tech figure? I, I'm just gonna... Bear is now a tech figure out here, people. You never knew it until now. Uh, the movement has been a punching bag for some leaders in Silicon Valley, like Twitter. Uh, Co-founder Jack Dorsey just counting his billions. And Tesla CEO, uh, CEO uh, Elon Musk counting his... Well, uh, uh, less than billions now, but uh, that's all right. He's still got a couple billion out there. Uh, critics say... Critics say uh, it's prone to the same issues that come with cryptocurrencies, like fraud and security flaws. What? No way. We've never, ever, ever documented that here on this channel. Never. That never happens. Never. Oh, that's it. Okay. <laughs> that is it, people. There you go. Uh, there you are. There is the inventor of the internet saying, hey, you know what? Bear is correct. Uh, a tech leader out there, tech leader, the comics bear, is correct. Yes, indeed. You never knew it until now. Yes, indeed. Oh, no. Oh, no, indeed. Oh, no. Uh, is that what Web3 is? Interesting. Uh, uh, kind of, sort of. Um, they're, they're trying to... Uh, 
it gets conflated a little bit with the, the sort of metaverse out there. Not to be confused with meta and the, the virtual reality stuff out there. But, uh, yeah, that's what they're kind of uh, trying to do is um, uh, decentralize a lot of that stuff and kind of, you know, it's kind of interesting that all the big tech platforms are investing in Web 3 or Web 3.0 or whatever uh, uh, to take quote-unquote power out of their hands. I, it probably sounds like it's just going to go all into their hands. So, you know, uh, I don't think uh, blockchain technology is probably the best. Uh, like he says, it's it's just too slow. It's way too slow. Maybe if they speed it up or something like that, it would work out. But um, it's a little, a little bit uh, too slow out there for people. It's neat. Yes, indeed. LOL says Marco for anything. Well, indeed. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> All right, people. Well, you know what? You know what? That is... That's the show, people. That's what Bear has. That's that's it. I, along with your chats, I need to scroll back and figure out what people are talking about. Pizza. Pizza, pizza, pizza. Pizza for everyone. Pizza for everyone. That would be great. That would be great. Oh, here we go. Anthony's is a pizza chain, is a chain, pardon me, uh, that makes cardboard and greasy pizza. Why would you ever go there? That sounds terrible. <clears throat> that sounds terrible. Uh, Amy, finally, uh, I started ordering pizza at the start of Bear Show, and it finally went through. Really? Well, hopefully it gets there a lot quicker. Hopefully it gets, uh, you know, 15 minutes. Uh, make sure, make sure, people, that you tip. You gotta tip your uh, pizza driver there. You're not going to get the pizza without the driver. Unless they got one of those. Wait a minute. Hold on. Doesn't doesn't Domino's have one of those AI-controlled little little robots, uh, 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 little cars or something like that that delivers it to you? You still got to go outside. That's that's a shame. They don't they don't walk it up to your door. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, everybody got everybody got. I, I should have just let off the show with the cheese. I I, I just I need to. I, I need to figure out my audience here. They, they love che they love the cheesy stuff out here. Who knew? Who knew? Well, no, not yet. The stream isn't over just yet. It, Bear will let you know when the stream is over. Bear will let you know. All right, well, the stream is over. <laughs> uh, uh, once again, people, we do appreciate you guys coming out. It is, I mean, people could do anything on their Saturday evening, uh, including watching a, a Bolts game out there, which is currently going on. Oh, but you're right here with Bear, and he does appreciate that. Oh, very, very much. We try and do this uh, every Wednesdays and Saturdays at uh, 8 o'clock. Although, you gotta be, gotta change those clocks out there, people. And also, don't forget, don't forget to check out uh, the old archive out there. Oh, we put up uh, these shows out. Why did it not? Did it not go through? Hold on. Let me, just, let me try that again. There we go. There we go. Why is it? Uh-oh. Did the chat... Oh, there we go. Pizza and outro. Well, it, it's a perfect, a perfect combination there. Yes, Lee. Well, you know what? All this talk, all of this talk about pizza and cheese. Well, not so much cheese, but pizza has made beer hungry. So he's going to head back into the woods. So until next time, people, grrr.